of taxing soft drinks has been making the rounds in Washington. Nutrition and economic experts suggest a tax of one penny on every ounce of soda and other sugar sweetened drinks. And a report in the New England Journal of Medicine this week states that this is an important element in the fight against obesity and diabetes. But as you can see from that ad, a lot of groups now thinking it should be not so. Joining me to make rounds from New Haven, Dr. Kelly Brunel. She's the director of Yale University's Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity, and she is the lead author of that report in the New England Journal. And here with me at 30 Rock, Elizabeth Whelan. She's president and founder of the American Council on Science and Health. I'm sorry, um, Kelly, I, I, I apologize for saying you were a she when I know you're a he. You. Um, would you explain to me, it's a very well-written article, and frankly, it's hard to punch holes in it because you lay out the, the finances quite well. But explain to me why you think this is a scientific argument. Well, the last thing you want to have is a new tax, but in some cases it might be justified. We believe in this case it is for the following reasons. The research on showing a link between sugar beverage consumption and diseases like obesity and diabetes is absolutely ironclad. The only studies for the most part that don't agree with it are ones funded by the industry. Second is that the cost for these diseases are borne by everybody because about half the cost for dealing with obesity, which is an enormous cost, are born uh, by Medicare and Medicaid, so of course we all pay for that. So very much like tobacco, where we decided as a society that a tax would help do two things, generate uh, a lot of revenue, but also decrease consumption of the product, we believe the same model applies here with sugared beverages. And let me run through a couple of the statistics, or at least the finances. A one cent per one ounce tax would raise $14.9 billion in just the first year, and it is how it equates if you're, if you're out shopping. If you buy a two liter bottle of anything, the cost would jump from $1.35 to $2.03. A 12 ounce can would go from, uh, if you've got a pack of the 12 ounce cans, $3.20 to $4.64. Elizabeth, I mean, the, what a wonderful way for a lot of people to say, let's fund health care. Um, exactly, but this is a very misguided effort in terms of dealing with obesity. Why? Obesity is a very serious medical problem. As you know, there are enormous health consequences of being overweight and obese, and we have to approach it scientifically. We know what makes people obese. Over-ingestion of calories and under, uh, under use of exercise options. But to that regard, it's, it's, it, the, the stats are that the average person consumes 175 calories a day from soft drinks. Uh, well, first of all, it's, it's absolutely absurd to zero in on one type of food or beverage as a cause of obesity. We have to look at the broad picture. You know, in terms of, of, of sodas, people who want to watch their calories, they have the option of diet soda. But to take away, basically to tax, and this tax is going to hit poor people particularly hard, uh, for a treat, uh, something that they may have occasionally and that they can accommodate in terms of their daily caloric intake is really misguided. You know, there's an old expression, um, that for every complex problem, there's a simple solution, and it never works. <laughs> so here we have a very complex problem, a simple solution, taxing soda, no way is it going to work. Uh, Kelly, it is a regressive tax. I don't think anyone's going to argue about that. Well, this is all, this is the same history with tobacco being played out, and groups like the one we just heard from, funded by the industry, will make arguments in favor of the status quo. So that's pretty understandable. Now, the regressive nature of a tax, though, really is a legitimate question. I respond in the following way. First, obesity and diabetes are regressive diseases. They hurt the poor the most. And then second, if the revenue that's generated by a tax goes back into those communities, it could be a great help. Sugared beverages are not necessary for survival. People have diet drinks. They have fruit um, fruit juices to pull from. Or, and of course, the no cost option of, of them all is water. And so we believe that a tax would drive down consumption of the unhealthier beverages, push up consumption of the the better ones and overall you'd have a significant public health impact you're not going to solve the obesity problem by any one thing nobody claims that to be the case but you've got to start somewhere and this argument that you don't want to pick on any one food basically paralyzes you from doing anything you know I'd like to correct first of all um, uh, your, uh, your guest we are not representing the industry we are representing a the group science. of 400 scientists who have come together to reach uh, scientific uh, consensus on subjects you know 
know, it, it is just not a useful thing to do. We have to approach this scientifically and not label foods as good foods or bad foods or, or you know, obesity-oriented foods. Look across the entire spectrum of the calories you're ingesting. And on that note, we'll have to end it there. Elizabeth Whelan and Kelly Brownell, thank you so much. But boy, would I like to have that $15 billion to sink into health care. That's you, a Nancy. little tempting. I appreciate it. And I really did enjoy the article. Very, very, very well done. Thank you both. Thank you. And a